What is going on my fellow navigators and welcome back to another video. Today's topic is all about whether you should be investing in ultra modern Pokemon card products. With a jam packed next few months for new releases, I've been getting a lot of questions from the community as to whether investing in some of the recent as well as upcoming products is a good idea. So today I wanted to give my thoughts and investing strategies when it comes to ultra modern Pokemon card sets. And just so you know guys, when I use the term ultra modern, I'm really referring to everything released really within the last year. So this video will be released in September, 2020. So really everything going back a year from this point is gonna be considered ultra modern as well as a lot of the new products that we know are gonna be released within the next few months. I'm also going to include those in the discussion as well. But before we get started, guys, you know what to do. Go ahead and give me that double slap attack, one for that like button, one for that subscribe button. And if you wanna be notified each and every time a new video drops, go ahead and thunder punch that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. So with the wave of new people entering the hobby increasing more and more every day, as well as the price point of vintage products becoming less attainable for the average investor, the obvious route that many people are taking is investing in ultra modern products. But is this actually a viable investment that you should be considering? Uh, especially considering the fact of how massively produced many of these products are, as well as the fact that many people are taking a stake in these products. And that's really the core of our discussion today. So I think the best way to go ahead and start this discussion is to really go back to the very beginning and start things off with the original base set. So one of the main concerns that I hear most often for um, investing in ultra modern or even modern sets is that these products are heavily mass produced. They're, they're very heavily printed. And one thing that I always like to retort with in, you know, in that regard is that even base set, the original base set was heavily printed, probably one of the most heavily printed sets of all time, um, along with sets like Jungle, Fossil, Team Rocket, many of these sets were just as heavily printed as any modern or ultra modern set today. So I think the, the big concern or the big um, downfall that many people see in uh, recent uh, or modern product um, it doesn't always hold true if you're looking at the long term. And that's one thing that I want to make sure that you all are aware of is that when we talk about, or at least for me, when I talk about investing in modern or ultra modern sets, I'm not talking about something that you're going to be looking to turn within the next few years. We're looking at, at a minimum, probably 10 year time horizon before you decide to either flip this product or try to sell it for a profit. And realistically, this is the same thing that we saw with vintage products as well. If you look back at the life cycle of base set, you really didn't start to see the, the growth in it until about six, seven, eight years after its release. And so realistically, you're gonna be looking at the same thing for modern and ultra modern sets. You wanna make sure that if you are gonna be investing in these products that you are getting into it for the long term. I wouldn't expect any kind of quick return on investment with these type of products. This is something that you're definitely gonna to want to hold on to for the long term. So with that being said, not every older or vintage set has seen the same type of growth over its life cycle. So for me, when I look at ultra modern, I'm really trying to pinpoint a few big characteristics that I have found uh, will separate that product over the long term and really be able to provide the biggest return on investment. And these are the same characteristics that many early investors, early speculators were looking at for a lot of these older vintage products as well. And again, like I said, we're gonna be looking 
at, at a minimum 10 years into the future for our time horizon. And so you're gonna wanna look at these characteristics and you're going to want to, to pinpoint those that you think have the long-term value. So the first key characteristic that I look at when I'm deciding whether I'm gonna be investing in an ultra-modern product, maybe something released in the last year, or a set that is going to be released in the near future, is um, an acronym that I've used before, which is WITS, which stands for What's in the Set. And what I mean by that is you're really looking at what the chase cards are for that particular set. Obviously, a, a big selling point is going to be whether there's a Charizard in that set. So take, for example, the most recent set that we had released, which was Darkness Ablaze. Um, a lot of people got really hyped for this set. Now, granted, it wasn't the, um, the rainbow rare uh, Charizard VMAX that we were hoping for, but we do have that full art hyper rare Charizard uh, VMAX that uh, you know is a big chase card. And so you're seeing a lot of, of product out there, a lot of people that are purchasing this product to try and get that, that hyper rare Charizard VMAX. But even with that being said, uh, from what I've seen with the pull rates, there are a lot of people pulling this card. So it's not exactly a, a, a very difficult card to try to pull from the set. So over the long term, because of that, I don't necessarily think that Darkness Ablaze is going to have tremendous long term value. Now, if you go back about a year and you look at a set like Hidden Fates, that hyper rare Charizard uh, GX was very difficult to pull. And even with the set being reprinted, you know, going on the third time, that is still a very, very difficult card to pull. Not to mention, you know, you had the full shiny vault with uh, Hidden Fates. There was just, it, it was just a really great set overall. And, and that's really the point that I'm trying to drive home here is just because, um, you know, a set might have, you know, a, a few nice chase cards in it, or, you know, maybe the, the set gets really hyped up over the long term, over 10 plus years, you're really gonna want to hone in on those sets that have those really difficult cards to come by. That's why you see Hidden Fates time and again, continuing to go up in value. You keep seeing the Hyper Rare Charizard GX continuing to go up in value because of the difficulty of pulling that card and, and also the popularity of that set when it was released. The next big characteristic that I like to look at when I am deciding whether to invest in an ultra modern product is the time in which it was released. Now you guys have heard me talk endlessly about XY Evolutions and one of the big reasons that I love Evolutions was really the time period in which that set came out. Back in 2016, as I've said before, big renaissance period for Pokemon in general. You had the release of Pokemon Go. It was the 20th anniversary of uh, the Pokemon company, the Pokemon brand. And then you had Evolutions, which was essentially a, a reprint of the original base set. So it brought back a lot of these nostalgic factors and it was also surrounded around a really pivotal time for Pokemon as a brand, as well as a lot of, of people getting back into the hobby. So that's the next big characteristic that I wanna drive home here is look at when that set was released. If you take a look at even over the last few years, many of the sets that you see increasing in value, they were released around a pretty pivotal moment. Sometimes it's just holiday sets. Holiday sets are usually very popular because they are pretty exclusive. They're only released for a limited period of time. And they also have uh, unique uh, product offerings, uh, really unique to that particular set. And I'm actually gonna get to that here in a moment on that particular point. But they're released around a, a particular time. And really looking on into the future with 2021 being the 25th anniversary of Pokemon, I think this is going to be a great time to go ahead and invest in sets that are coming out next year, especially if we do get a set uh, like Generations that is released specifically for the celebration of that anniversary. I think those are gonna be great sets 
to invest in because as we've seen time and time again for these pivotal moments the sets that are released congruently with them typically have really good long-term value and and even in the short term we've seen a lot of of increase in value and i think that's definitely something else that you want to look at look at when it's being released holiday sets are always a good option because they are released in a very small window uh, you take a set like hidden fates for instance that it was released in a, a small uh, window and now it, as i said it has been reprinted a few times but we're taking into consideration other things along with that along with you know the wits acronym what's in the set that you know that hidden fates is kind of that that really um that really good example of what a a ultra modern set would look like if it's going to have uh, really long-term value and then the last big characteristic here and i kind of hinted towards it before but the other thing that you want to look at is the type of products released in that set and what i mean by that is obviously you've got you know booster boxes maybe you've got pin collections but something that i've found that really separates uh, especially modern and ultra modern sets from the rest is really unique product offerings so to be honest with you guys for many ultra modern sets in particular a lot of the time um, i'll open up booster boxes i won't actually hold booster boxes or i don't have plans on holding booster boxes for the long term one of my big strategies is actually the etbs the elite trainer boxes because as we've seen even with like sets like hidden fates sets like um team up and um unbroken bonds those booster boxes they, they have a tendency to get reprinted or, or ultra prism for that for instance you tend to see reprints of booster boxes however you don't typically see reprints of the elite trainer boxes now you may get some overstock that uh, they have you know like for instance with xy evolutions we've recently seen the um the release of the xy evolutions elite trainer boxes but these are really just uh, products that they had maybe in back stock um, that they hadn't put out before and with you know pokemon growing in popularity stores like walmart target are trying to get them back out on the shelves just to kind of get that back stock out but as far as reprinting typically you're not going to see a reprint of the elite trainer boxes so i definitely think that if a set has an elite trainer box that is probably going to be uh, one of your better options to go ahead and invest in versus a, um, a booster box. And the nice thing about that is they come at a lot lower price. You're not getting the same amount of packs on the inside, but it's really just that, that sealed product in general that I think is going to have a higher long-term value as we move on into the future. The other big thing to look at would be um, more exclusive product offerings. I'll give you an example, the Shining Legends Super Premium Collection. Uh, recently, those were released back out onto the Pokemon Center website for $80 picked a few of those up and now they're going for around 140 150 dollars and those are just really unique really limited product offerings that you don't see re-release so if a set has something like that i would definitely go ahead and jump on that and as i said if you've got some of those other characteristics that you're knocking off as you're looking at products you know as far as what's in the set if there's big chase cards in there if it's being released in a pivotal time let's say next year for the 25th anniversary and you're they're releasing unique product offerings for that particular set that's a win 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 and like i said if you're looking at like a modern day example probably the most recent one that i can think of hidden fates would probably be one that just knocks off all of those different characteristics there and as we've seen hidden fates has has held its own over the last year even with uh, subsequent reprints we're still seeing that set go up and up as well as that uh, chase card being that hyper rare charizard gx so i think that's a good example to look at um, and i think you should also look at all of these characteristics when you're considering investing in ultra modern pokemon card sets
So that is pretty much gonna do it for today, guys. Let me know what you thought of this discussion. Let me know if you agree, if you disagree. Let me know if there's other characteristics out there, which I'm sure there are, that you guys look at when you're considering investing in ultra modern Pokemon card sets specifically. I would definitely be interested to hear those. And I would definitely be interested to know what sets maybe over the last year or, or, or over the next few months that you guys think hits all of these characteristics and that you think is going to have the biggest ROI moving on into the future. So thank you again, guys, for coming back each and every week. Thank you so much for your support. Other than that, my name is Pokenav. I'm here to help you navigate the world of Pokemon one video at a time, and I will see you all in the next video.